Thoughts on uh, Western Michigan this weekend? Yeah, um, very good team. Uh, very good offensive team. Plays fast, plays hard. Um, yeah, they're a hungry team. I watched video of them playing against St. Cloud, and uh, yeah, they uh, they got a lot of things going. They got a lot of top scores, a lot of really good forwards, uh, big heavy D, jump up, up in the rush. They're getting good goaltending as well. So, you know, they're playing good hockey right now, and uh, and we are as well. Is it unique that we're almost to March and you're seeing a team in your league for the first time? It's almost a little like a precursor for the NCAA tournament, seeing this caliber of team this late. 100 percent, you know, uh, with that um, unbalanced schedule, this was the year that we don't go to Western and uh, obviously uh, haven't played them early in the season and it's, it's later in the season. And what we do generally is, uh, you know, we, we go over our, our system and structure. That's the main thing. Uh, but this weekend we did something a little bit different, knowing that we haven't played them earlier on that I wanted to, our guys have to have their ears up and know what we're dealing with here. And again, it is about us and how we have to play to our identity, but it is about knowing what we're dealing with, with a, with a really good team coming in here and, and some of the tendencies that they have, even strength, power play, penalty kill. And, and uh, so we started with that early and uh, I think it really got the attention of our players. We had some, some good practices here where we've worked on some different things, but again, we got to make sure that we continue to do the things that we have to do uh, that that's given us success in the past and will in the future. It's a bit of an emotional weekend with, you know, home ice up for grabs. You can win the Penrose. You got senior weekend. As a, as the coach, is that something you address? Do you let the players handle it? Do you not bring it up at all? Kind of, what's your philosophy on that? Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, a little bit of everything, right? You know, uh, you know, we've touched on it a little bit as we get closer to the weekend. We'll we'll, we'll uh, um, kind of touch on it again. Um, you know, we got a small class this year. I know we have some fifth year guys that have went through that already. Um, but we do have a small class, but nonetheless, yeah, I, you know, we, we talked about it actually right after the Christmas break, uh, about how time flies in the second half of the season, how, how, uh, it, it exponentially goes by very quick, especially for the seniors and fifth year guys. And, and it hit home in that meeting that we had. And, and I know this weekend is going to be very special. There's going to be a lot of family and friends and, and different people in the impact in the Ralph here to witness our last regular season game. We plan on playing a lot more games after, but you know, it, it's always, it always encapsulates with this weekend on a Saturday where it gets emotional, uh, but it doesn't take away from our focus. Um, I think our, our group has done a good job in years past of just relying on what the job at hand is on Friday and Saturday night, and then taking a breath after Saturday night and enjoying it with family and friends. And what can you say about your senior class? You obviously have the two and Reese and Griffin that have been here for four years and then also honoring Hunter Johannes and Ludwig Person this weekend. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's awesome. I know, you know, when you look at the two that, you know, came in here as freshmen together and, you know, we've had guys leave early signing pro. We've had guys in years past, we have guys that most recently maybe transfer, whatever that looks like. Um, it seems like it's it's a small class, but it's a very dynamic class, a very impactful class. and. Um, can't say enough about Reese Gaver as far as what he's done and his body of work from his freshman year to now on and off the ice. Same with Griffin Ness. You know, Griffin's path, path has been probably a little bit more up and down a little bit, you know, but I'll tell you what, for him to be here uh, and to make an impact in our program when he's in the lineup, uh, it, it just, it's a true testament to who he is and his character and his resiliency and, uh, and what he is about North Dakota. And then finally with uh, Hunter Johannes and Ludwig Pearson, you know, both coming from other programs, uh, Honoring uh, Ludwig after his fourth year, it's very appropriate. You know, even though he's only been here one, he's made a huge impact. And then Hunter, Hunter's always bled green. Um, you know, through his his uh, boyhood into adolescence, into turning into a man, he's always followed our program. And to uh, finally get honored as a uh, outgoing senior, uh, I think that's uh, that's going to be something humbling to him and, and us as well. And one X's and O's question for me. Your penalty kill has been obviously a tough night Friday at Cardo College, but since then you haven't allowed a power play goal. Is that uh, is that you're staying out of the box less? Is it is it you changed some something on the PK a little bit of everything? Kind of what's it been? It's like a test question. All of the above, uh, just like what you said. The very first one I'm going to hit home on. Um, we took a lot of penalties in Colorado College. We were indisciplined in a lot of different areas which gives teams more opportunities. That's number one. We've done a good job of limiting that this year, so that goes into it. Have to continue to do that, play hard, play on the edge, but not over the edge. And then the other thing, too, is making sure that we're we're sharp with our details and habits. I thought we were really loose in Colorado College with our, our neutral zone and, our, and especially in our D zone. Uh, we were sharp this past weekend here, and I think we're going to have to continue to be all of the above. 
you'd mentioned addressing the team this week, but does it kind of feel like an NCAA tournament matchup just because of what both teams are playing for right now? 100%. You know, they're they're fighting for home ice. You know, they're they're fighting for, you know, staying in the national tournament in, in a pairwise seed. They're, they're fighting to be in the top four to, to, uh, to have home ice advantage in the playoffs. So they're fighting for a lot. We are as well. Like, at the end of the day, we want that Penrose. Like, we want... <laughs> We talk about it each and every year, and uh, you know we have some pretty lofty goals. But our guys are all about trying to get to that level, and uh, and they're focused, uh, they're dialed in. So again, we're concentrating on that side, and there, there's motivation there. The other thing is, is we want to be a number one seed in the tournament. We do not want to give up that that top four seed or that top four seed in pairwise, which is a number one seed. We want to make sure that we're solidly in there and go after the number one spot, but stay in the top four. You had mentioned Western's strength offensively, obviously on full display last year when they were here too. Uh, but what does it take maybe defensively for you guys this weekend? Playing as a five-man unit. Um, we can't get spread out over the zone. Like, you know, our D have to get up and have good gaps. Our forwards have to be tracking back. Like, we have to make sure we play as a five-man unit up and down the ice. You know, when we played against Denver here, which is a very good offensive team, I thought that was one of the best, better weekends that we played as a five-man unit on the ice. We're going to have to play that th this weekend against a team that's reminiscent of Denver. Can you talk about how Dylan James has stepped up his play this year? Yeah, you know what? He's uh, he, he's taken it up a notch or a few notches, uh, and I think it all is self-confidence. It's 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 what you, what he believes he can do. Um, he's such a great person, such a humble person, and I think now he's starting to puff his chest out a little bit and 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 feel it in the fact that hey you know what I am a good player I, I I can make these plays and you know when the game's on the line in the third period to do what he did um to to take a D on taking Mawai going across the net scoring that goal and then the final one of you know making that quick hands play on a rush where the goalie's coming out at you you can't do that unless you believe in yourself and you have confidence and, and believe you me we have trust and faith in him you know another guy is Jackson Koontz kind of the same thing like guy another guy that's stepping up in in his uh, career here at North Dakota. And we try to empower our guys. We're, we're a nurturing environment. We're, we're hard and we're strong and we're accountable to our guys, but we're empowering and we're nurturing. And, and I think that's a big thing that these guys are feeling right now. Yeah, because that really puts your depth of your roster on display. I know you guys have really prided yourself on that, but it seems like last weekend that depth is what helped you against Duluth and is going to help you against Western. 100%. You know, I mean, the, the guys that when you look at a score sheet and you look at our line charts, you always look at Jackson Blake, Reese Gaber, Owen McLaughlin. You know some of those guys all the time and you know for us to have success especially against you know hard heavy teams and and very good teams uh uh we're gonna have to have guys stepping up at different times and that's how you win and again i've been preaching it here for you know ever since the beginning of the year and years before about depth you're only as good as the depth on your team and, and uh, we feel we have a lot of depth this year